across the rugged Indian territory rides a tall young man on a mission of mercy. His medical bag strapped on one hip, his six-shooter on the other. This is Dr. Six-Gun. The first episode in the exciting adventure series, Dr. Six-Gun. Matson, M.D., was the gun-toting frontier doctor who roamed the length and breadth of the old Indian territory. Friend and physician to white men and Indian alike, a symbol of justice and mercy in the lawless west of the 1870s, this legendary figure was known to all as Dr. Sixgun. Dr. Sixgun was my friend. Me? Well, they call me Pablo. It's as good a name as any for a gypsy. <laughs> I am a peddler, and I have many things in my pack. There is not much of which I am proud, but there is one thing. I can call Doc Sixgun my friend. Huh? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> this one, it is Black Raven, is also my friend. Hey, midnight! Huh? Hello? <laughs> Well, a bird that talks is no more strange than a man who sings. But let me tell you of my friend, the doctor. It was in the spring of 1871 that the wagon train came into the territory. Pennsylvania Germans they were, and on the whole, a respectable lot. Except for one man. Well... We wandered into their camp one April morning, midnight and I, to see what we could sell them. And there, our story begins. What is it, Mr. Ford? Oh, Randall tells me you got a sick Indian boy in your wagon. That's right. He comes stumbling into camp about 20 minutes ago. Half delirious. Said his village was sick. We're going to move north. You don't say. Get him out. Now, wait a minute. I said get him out. Well, I happen to own this wagon, Mr. Gorp. And I happen to be leader of this wagon thing. We've been starving in these rocks for six months now. We can't afford sickness. Where is he? Inside. Okay, engine, on your feet. On your feet, I said, understand? Well, he's one of them Spanish talking mescalero Apaches. He don't savvy. Well, he'll savvy this. Oh, don't hit him, Cole. I'll hit him if it makes a move. Come on, now. Here, let me, let me help you, young fella. And now, easy, easy. Let me help you, Don. Okay, Membrano. Oh, get. Can't you see he's too weak? A couple of bullets are on his feet and he'll move. Oh, oh, okay, maybe you're caught, please. Out of the way. Pardon me, gentlemen. Who the devil are you? My name is Pablo, sir. I am a peddler. Ah, 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 Get the raven ah, away from me. Midnight, ah, come here. He will not harm me, sir. He's a pet. Right, Midnight? Ah, 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 I hear him talk? Oh, Midnight does many things. Watch. Midnight. Midnight on by myself. Look at that. I don't care if he's a genius. Keep him away until we take care of this engine. Gentlemen, please, I could not help but overhearing. The boy is sick, is he not? He'll be a lot sicker if he don't get. Or perhaps I could help. I am on my way to see a friend of mine in Frenchman's Fort, a physician. I will take the Indian boy along. Oh, that's mighty nice of you, stranger. Pablo. <laughs> and this is midnight. <laughs> My name's Willie James. This is our leader, Aaron Ford. I'm going to round up the men, folks, for a meeting. See that this engine is gone before we start. Mr. James, would you help me tie the Indian boy to my mule? He seems very weak. Well. Sure thing, Pablo. All right. <laughs> Uh, 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 thank you. Uh, perhaps 
I will come back here and sell some trinkets to your people. Eh? Not to this wagon train. This is a bad luck outfit. We ran out of money, had to butcher our oxen for food. We've been stuck here six months. When winter comes, I don't know what'll happen. My wife and little girl. Well, you best be gone. Well, perhaps I will return anyway. Adios. What's the name of this doctor friend of yours? Hey, Doc Sixgun. Oh. Have you heard of him? Well, who hasn't? <laughs> Only doctor I ever know. The pack six shooter on his hip. Oh, he come up a few weeks ago. Treat my missus. Wouldn't take a cent. Yes, that sounds like my friend. Well, sir, adios. Come along, me night. <laughs> me, doctor, do have any cure for a restless soul. Oh, hello, you <laughs> old son of a gun. Where you been? Where have I not been? <laughs> How are you, old friend? Just fine. You look well. <laughs> Weep before God, laugh before people. <laughs> However, but come I in. Come in. Stay a few weeks. Stay a year. Where's midnight? Oh, ah, 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 ah. There you are, you old seagull. Ah, ah, you see you in the dark. Well, Pablo, you coming? One moment, please. I have a sick Indian outside. A sick Indian? Well, why didn't you say so? Bring him in. You'll have to help me carry him. Sure, sure. Oh, All right, here he is. Now, don't be afraid, boy. This man will help you. Easy, now. Let's lift him here. Careful. All right. Put him down here. Right. Ah, now hold the lantern. Now, Pablo, you better get the lantern. Why, I know this boy. So? His name is Modi Pony. He's the son of an Apache chief. Well, let's see what... Uh-oh. Shiris? Measles. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Not to a white man. To an Indian, it can be as fatal as bubonic plague. Oh. He seems over the worst of it. Modi Pony. Hola. Can thou hear me? I hear the white eyes. My people. What of thy people? The spotted sickness. How many? Ten warriors have gone to their hunting grounds in so many days. The shaman, Grey Fox, urges us to leave our home and go into the snow country. My father is against it. I went for help to the camp of the White Eyes. What does he say? Their uh, medicine man wants them to go north. Why north? The only way they know to fight the measles is with freezing climate. It arrests the disease. Oh. The only trouble is that a sick tribe moving north in winter usually starves to death in roots. Something can be done, surely. Padalo, you stay here and take care of the boy. I think he'll be all right. I'll get up there and try to help his people. Maybe I can persuade him to stay. Oh, that's dangerous country. The Apaches don't trust the white man. Well, I'll have chances. If I can isolate the active cases, I may be able to control it. In any case, they mustn't move off the land. That wagon train of settlers could move in and claim it under the law. That's rich country. I'll stay. I'll have to pack in a hurry. I'll need plenty of fever pills and morphine. Come on, Sage. And you ain't some? No. Uh, All right. We need land. Good farmland. If we don't get it, we starve. Well, 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 I'll well, tell you where we can get acres of the best land you ever saw. Uh, you can almost see it from here. I'm talking about the land the government give them stinking Apaches and the peace treaty with Cochise. They don't farm that land. All they do is hunt on it. Oh, what good is that dog? I'll tell you what good. There's an epidemic of measles in the Apache village. One of them comes stumbling into camp this afternoon. Well, I found out that their medicine man is telling them to move north. Off the land. That means we move in. Except for one. 
one thing. There's a fellow named Doc Sixgun on his way to that village to stop the epidemic. Now, the way I look at it, either we stop Doc Sixgun from reaching that village, or we die. I say stop him. Wait a minute. Listen. Listen to me. You know what you're doing? Are you willing to trade your souls for a few acres of dirt? When we left Pennsylvania to come out west, we had a dream. We wanted to be free men on our own land, beholden to nobody. What's happened to you? You can't eat dreams. This is inhuman. Listen to the dreamer, men. We've had all we can stand. It's time for action. Let's go. Stop. I'll shoot the first man that moves. Well, he's hanged. Put down that gun. I mean it. I can't stand by and see this happen. How can we hold up our heads? Nice work, Luke. That's what's going to happen to anybody else who lily livers out. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. Nothing worth stealing. We ain't crooks. If you're not, why not take off those masks? I'll give the orders, Doctor. Now, empty that medical bag. All right. You win. Drop the stuff on the ground. Stethoscope. Narcotics. Scalpels. Needles. Cat gut. Flint. Anything else? Uh, just one thing. What? This. Oh, not let go. Don't anybody move. You see that? Chop the rifle right out of his hand. I carry an extra gun in my bag for emergency operations, Mr. Gulp. Now take off those masks, all of you. Makes you feel a little exposed without a mask, doesn't it, gentlemen? And not quite so brave. You grown men should be ashamed of yourselves, playing vigilante at your age. Don't move, Gulp. Now get down and pick up that stuff and put it back in my bag. Hurry up, I haven't got time to wait. Close it. Throw it here. Now, I suggest that none of you boys try to follow me. I suggest you all go home and take care of your family. Come on, Faye. Let's go. Mount up, men. We're going after him. Mount up, I say. Let's go home. Let's go. No regret this. Ah, shut your mouth. I'm with you, Galt. I've got six kids back in my wagon. It ain't right them Indians have the land, even if it's there. All right, Luke. We need that land. Okay. You going after him? You got too much thought for that. I got a better idea. What's that? Look here. In my hand. Well, it's a glass bottle. Where'd you get that? I found it out of the doc's medical bag when I was putting the things back. Read it. Dr. Metzen, prussic acid, 100 grains. <laughs> One grain would kill you dead. Well, what kind of that stuff? This stuff? This stuff is going to make Doc Six Gun wish he'd never tangled with Aaron Gaunt. Let's go. Where to, Gaunt? Frenchman's Ford. I want to inquire after a sick friend. Oh, Sage. Oh, boy. Hello! Anybody here? Stand, white eyes. Sir. Do not move. I am Gray Fox, medicine man to the Chiricahua. Who art thou? Medicine man to the White Eyes. What is thy name? 
I'm called Doc Sixka. Why dost thou come? I bring strong medicine against the spotted sickness. Gray Fox has made strong medicine. There is nothing to do but leave this place of evil spirits. Go home, White Eyes. I come to see your chief, Tallhorse. I say, go home. I have given medicine to Modi Pony, the son of Tall Horse. I think you'd better take me to see him. Very well, White Eyes. I do not trust thee, but I will take thee to Tall Horse. Follow me. Here is the Hogan of the High Council. Enter. Who is this, Sir Sherman? This is Medicine Man of the White Eyes, O Chief. He says he comes in peace. Stay in peace. He says he has ministered to Son of Tall Horse. Is this true? I treated thy son only tonight, though, Chief. He lives. Thy son will recover. What is thy rank among the white eyes? Brave. Sit by my left hand. Speak. I have medicines to stop the sickness. What medicine? Here, in these blue bottles. Are these magical? They are of a lesser magic, but very strong. Gray Fox counsels us to go north. Give me just two days. What do you say, men of Chiricahua? I do not trust White Eyes. They have betrayed us before. It shall be for the council to decide. Is there consent? If so, break your arrow. All but you, Gray Fox. I have sworn against the White Eyes, as hast thou. The council has decided, White Eyes. But if you do us evil, the revenge of the Chiricahua will be swift and terrible. Now, we make thee our brother. down to see how the Indian boy is getting along. Come in, come in. He's feeling much better. The fever has broken. Oh, that's fine, huh, Luke? Hmm? Oh, yeah, oh, sure, sure. That's fine, fine. You, uh, heard from the doc? No. Ah, ah, get out, get out. Quiet, ah, midnight, ah, quiet. Ah, Mind if I go in to see him? Not at all. Just want to check. Since he came to us, I wouldn't want the Apaches to hold us responsible if anything happened to him. You understand? If I will go with you. It is time for his medicine anyway. Well, I'll give it to him. Uh, uh, Luke has a splinter he'd like you to take out. Right, Luke? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a bad one. Oh, well, I will do it. Here is the medicine for both the pony. I will mix it in the water. So, he knows how to take it. I'll just go in. Now, show me this, uh, this uh, splinter. Uh, it, it's right here in this hand. Well, I see no splinter. It, come in the light. Or it, it pains off. Are ah, you sure? I see nothing. I don't see it. That's funny. Maybe it's the other hand. Oh, well, I will look. Okay. Forward. What? What is it? Look. Moody Pony. He's dead. It is possible. What happened? I don't know. I gave him the medicine and he took a swallow and went limp. Let me listen for his heart. Well? He is dead. That's what I thought. Stand up and turn around. Huh? Why'd you point the gun? Do like I say. Search him, Luke. He's not carrying a gun. All right. You got a buckboard? Yes, he... Put the body of Moody Pony in the back. We're gonna take a journey. You ain't coming back either. <laughs>
Hey, Gray Fox. What does the White Eyes want? I need help. Take two tablets from the blue book, the glass, and give them to the wife of Long Bear. As thou sayest, White Eyes. Hmm. This child has a temperature. Place him away from the well ones. And uh, watch for the spots. Yes, White Eyes. All right, now. Gray Fox. Yes, our chief. What does the White Eyes? He gives medicine from the blue glass. The effect? They fall into deep sleep. I do not trust it. Have any died? Not yet. Bring me news in the council if anything happens. Why does the council send for me, Gray Fox? Enter the Hogan, White Eyes. Very well. Oh, Chief, I have much work. It is not fair to thy people to... Holy pony. Gaze upon body of the son of Tall Horse. How, how did he get here? He was brought here by two white eyes, along with Peddler who did this evil thing. Pablo, you all right? Uh, he's a lot better than he's gonna be, Doc. What happened, Pablo? I gave Moldy Pony the medicine. Gold found him dead. Thus didst minister to son of Tall Horse, O oh, Chief. You hear me now, O men of the Chiricahua? For his perfidy, the white medicine man and his friends shall be dishonored and die. Take them hence and tie them to the cactus plant with thongs of wet rawhide. When the sun shall rise full, the thongs will shrink. And then they shall feel the wrath of the Chiricahua Apache. After the burial of Mordiponi. Our people will burn their organs. We shall leave this land of evil spirits forever. No harm to the white eyes who came in peace. And thus has the council ordered. Thongs fastened to the white medicine man and his friend. They are, O oh, Chief. We will leave them. Come. Come on, Doc. You want to speed it up a little? Here's the bottle of prussic acid that killed Moldy Pony. Thanks for the use of it. Come away from them. Let them meditate on their sin until the sun shall rise. I. At the funeral, we weep for the spirit of Mordi Pony. Uh, easy, Pablo. Uh, the easy. bones begin to press. Uh, see, the sun is high. Try not to move. See, the vultures come already. Yes. Uh, Pablo. Yes. That's no vulture. It's midnight. Midnight. Oh, I found it. Midnight. I have a thought. A wild thought, but still. What? My raven can untie nuts. What? It's a trick. I would often have him untie the string on my peddler's sack. Midnight. Midnight. The knot. Untie the knot. He's going to the knot. Untie, untie. He's tugging at it. Oh, no use. He's getting it. Pablo, he's getting it. Thus do I consecrate the body of my son, Mordi Pony. Pile the stones on his grave. Wait, O Chief. Six guns. White Eyes stands on the rocks. Kill him. Wait, men of Tirikawa. Speak quickly. 
For in the moment you shall die on my lands. Men of Chiricahua, I proclaim my innocence. And I risk my life to give proof everlasting. Don't listen to him. I will. Wait. How will you do this, Waiters? I will do it by raising from the dead your son, Modipony. Ah, he tricks you. Oh, this is the strongest medicine of all, Waiters. Beware. Give me one moment. Doc, how can you do this? Get my medical kit. Galt has it. The doctor needs his medicine bag. It is a trick. We shall see. Give him the bag. Here, Doc. Pray, Pablo. If you do this magic, you are my brother. If not... I'm praying, Doc. Give me the spirits of ammonia from the bag. Spirits of ammonia. Here. Now... He desecrates the body of Modipone. Kill him! Stop! Look. His eyes move. He waits. My son awakes from the dead. Modipone. Modipone, canst thou hear me? I... Tell us the name of the man who poisoned you. See, O oh chief. He points at this one. Look, run, sir! him! Small go, boy, guys. Thou art my brother. Doc, yes, please. Before I explode like a bomb, what happened? <laughs> When we first saw Modipone's body, I noticed that rigor hadn't set in, even though some hours had gone by. Uh, then when Gold gave us that blue bottle, I remembered that it didn't contain prussic acid at all. Uh, I put morphine in it just before we left and didn't have time to change the label. Then Modipone was never dead? Just drugged into a deep stupor. Uh -huh. The uh, spirits brought him back. Uh -huh. Spirits of ammonia. <laughs> <laughs> there is a saying among the gypsy people... You cannot get two skins off an ox. You have proved it wrong. You have been listening to Dr. Six Gun. Six Gun is played by Carl Weber and Pablo by William Griffiths. Today's script was written by George Leffords. Heard in the cast were Peter Capel as Aaron Galt, Kermit Murdoch as Willie James, Donald Buca as Modi Pony, Richard Saunders as Luke, William Keane as Gray Fox, and Craig McDonald as Chief Tallhorse. Starring Carl Weber as the Frontier Doctor, with William Griffiths as Pablo, the Wandering Gypsy, has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.